Hey, hey, what's up? Rigo here. So I'm just hanging out in the show with uh, our lesson coordinator, Ryan Hooker, and uh, we're just getting ready for our 2018 snow kite season. Just starting to uh, book some lessons up for this year, so if anyone's interested in getting out and uh, getting started on some powder this winter, give us a ring. Yeah, right on. So uh, if you don't know Ryan, he's been uh, running our lesson program for about two or three years now. So this week we're going to do the Switchblade versus the Evo. So let's get to it. The two reigning champions in the all-around freeride category, the North Evo versus the Cabrina Switchblade. Now both of these kites are known to be uh, incredibly user-friendly and amongst the most versatile in the industry. So how do they stack up back to back? They both fall into the same category and they both offer many of the same benefits. Let's start with the things you can expect from both of these kites. So both of these kites are going to have an above average wind range and they're what I like to call pull and go kites. And all I mean by that is, you know, if you can stay up wind and you have enough power, all you have to do is pull the bar in and you're going to jump. You know, they're characterized by you know, loftier jumps, um, you know, you're going to get lots of air with them, uh, really easy, easy descent. You know, they're not going to jump uh, as good as, say, like the Rebel or the Apollo, but you're going to get a more versatile kite. And likewise, you know, they're not going to be as aggressive as, say, the FX or the Dice, but they're going to be nice and lofty, a nice smooth descent. So if we kind of go back to that spectrum we talked about in our video with the Slingshot Rally versus the RPM, I had uh, mentioned how kites fall on a different line. Uh, you know, ranging from the most user-friendly to the most aggressive. So if you think where they fall on the spectrum, like we talked about last week, you know, you have aggressive kites on one end of the spectrum, and on the other, you have kites like the Rebel or the Apollo, which are very different kites, I need to point out here. But they do have that same characteristic of uh, big, lofty airs. So one common attribute that I've talked about in many videos now is how all-around kites are good at just about everything. So with these kites, you can expect them to be good at big air, you know, hooked in tricks, or if you're into the freestyle wake style, you're gonna enjoy these kites, and uh, as well, the waves. Now, I should mention that uh, these kites are not going to fare as well as, say, like, you know, the Neo or the Drifter in uh, each brand's respective lineup here. But, you know, that said, unless waves are your main game, you're definitely not going to hold yourself back. So I actually spent uh, most of the season riding in the waves on a Switchblade, which, you know, four years ago I would have thought was silly, but, uh, you know, coming back and really putting some time in the waves on that kite, I was more than happy. So, you know, for most of us who aren't professional wave riders or just aren't always chasing the waves, yeah, these are going to be a great choice for you. The way to approach this is just ask yourself a question. Are waves my main game? Yes then get a wave kite. Do I want to do a little bit of everything? Then you're going to want an all-around kite. And then it really just comes down to deciding between these two kites, which one resonates the most with you. So being that these kites are so similar, what kind of differences can you expect between them? Well, um, you know, the first thing to think about is the Switchblade, it's a four-line kite, whereas the Evo can actually be flown as a four or a five-line kite. We've addressed this in uh, previous videos and other series. What you can expect out of a five-line kite is something like 5% more D-power. So yes, technically that is the safest you can possibly be, but uh, realistically everything with a four-line D-power is going to be totally safe. And I'm not even going to go into comparing the safety systems because truth be told with all of the major brands there's no real advantages with the safety systems. In 2017 it's pretty silly to compare safety systems with any of the major brands. They really all do it equally well. And uh, you know the thing to consider here is with a fifth line yes you do get more D-power or rather um, more D-power when you deploy the quick release. So it's going to be like 5% safer. You know, just, just marginal. It doesn't make that big of a difference. But the, uh, the trade-offs here when you do go to a fifth line is, uh, you know, when you drop the kite in the waves or if it's, you know, just a really hectic crash, sometimes that fifth line can actually wrap around the kite and then from there you're going to actually have to perform a self-rescue. So there is that to consider and, uh, you know, I personally prefer the Evo on the four line for that reason. So something else to consider between these two kites would be the bar pressure. Now, for the longest time, the Switchblade was known for having quite heavy bar pressure and sometime around 2015, you know, we saw significant improvements there and, uh, you know, you can really find a much lighter Switchblade now. But between these two, you're definitely going to get lighter bar pressure out of the Evo. 
Now, I see this as a fair trade-off with the slight difference in low-end power. So one of the advantages I found to the uh, lighter bar pressure, the Evo, is when teaching students, there are a number of students who just don't like that heavier bar pressure of the Switchblade, and uh, for that reason, the Evo does have that benefit. So aside from the fifth line, what other major differences? Well, let's start with the wind range. So these kites are very close, but uh, we do find that the Switchblade does have just a touch more on the low end, and the high end is more or less the same. Um, you know, so to give you some perspective here, I've actually taken both the 12 Evo and the 12 Switchblade out and ride around 11 miles per hour and I was able to stay upwind and I was able to jump with them and it was a fun session. Now bear in mind I was on a 148 Liquid Force Overdrive light wind board so that did make a difference and save the session. Uh, you know, and as well I've capped these kites out somewhere around 25 miles per hour. Definitely not recommended, uh, you know, I don't really like pushing them past the 20 three mark personally, um, but point being, the Switchblade does have a little more low end, meaning you can take the same size kite out in less wind. Mind you, not a lot less. Now there is a catch here too, even mildly experienced riders with any light wind flying skills will be able to use the Evo in the same wind range. So what else can we talk about on these kites? Another point of interest is the pigtail options. So the Switchblade offers three knots on the pigtails when setting up your kite and this allows you to change the angle of attack, thus the wind range on your kite. In lighter wind, you can use the knot closest to your kite to add some power. In moderate to strong wind, you can use the other two knots to optimize your session. You know, in relation to the bridle, there are two wingtip settings. The A is for lighter bar pressure and faster turning. The B is for more feedback, higher bar pressure. It'll also slow down the turning of the kite. So with that said, the B setting is going to be great for those riders who uh, you know, are learning a new trick or like to unhook and you want a little bit more feedback from your kite, go with the B setting. If you want to go play in the waves or do kite loops, then put it on the A setting. You're going to get a faster, more playful kite in that regard. The Evo, uh, on the other hand, has one knot on the pigtails. However, it does have three offerings in the bridle. So there's a soft setting, which does the same as the A setting on the switchblade, and then the hard setting, also doing the same as the B setting. But then there's the medium setting, and this is the stock setting, and it bridges the gap between the two. So while the Evil may not offer as many pigtail options, it does offer more customization in this regard. So what kite is better? Well, honestly, I've never seen two kites that were so equally yoked. You know, it really just comes down to the number of small differences, and mind you, these are very small differences between these two kites. You know, biggest points to take away here would be that the Evo has a little less bar pressure, the Switchblade has marginally more low end, and that's really it. So when it comes down to choosing between these two, this is one of the few cases where I'm going to tell you, go off the color, because both of these kites are great. They've really been the reigning uh, champions as far as all around free ride kites go for a very long time and for a very good reason. There is absolutely no wrong choice here. With that said, uh, you know, if you get the chance to try these kites out, I highly recommend it. You know, I like to think of there being two camps in kiteboarding. There's Camp Cabrina and Camp North. Now, when I learned, I learned on Cabrina. So naturally, I was in Camp Cabrina. But, you know, having the opportunity to try all these different kites and really get to play around and experiment and, you know, use the Evo, I've really come to understand why it is that when somebody goes to North, it's pretty hard to get them off of North kites. Um, but I'm actually unbiased here. I love both of these kites. I would happily pick either one. And, uh, you know, again, as I always say, this is an open forum and about getting a conversation going. So, you know, in order to help people who are researching these kites right now, I would love it if you guys just gave us some of your feedback as well. When people are researching these kites, I want them to hear what I had to say, and I want them to hear what you had to say. So leave some comments, let us know your thoughts. And, uh, you know, if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. And uh, as always, please subscribe. And until next week, this has been Rigo, and I'll see you on Wednesday.